Hey everybody, it's Karen from Waterfall Acrylics, the one and only employee of Waterfall Acrylics. Uh, happy almost Thanksgiving. Um, getting in a little poor before, you know, we stuff ourselves with turkey tomorrow. Um, before I get started, I wanted to show you guys a couple of things. Um, I can't show you the big one because he's still fairly wet. It's only been three days and I'm not touching it. It's staying in there for at least a week. Um, I can show you the results of the, uh, what was that video called? Um, the cheer me up pour? Yeah, not really cheered up. Not so much at all. That one, I just hate it. So, um, it's a little practice pour. It's on a, um, a student grade canvas, like a staple back canvas, so it's not on a good canvas. And it just looks muddy. I don't like the colors. I don't like anything about it. Blah. So, we'll just keep that one for, you know, a pour to practice colors on or something for experiments. Um, I wanted to show you quick the, I know I showed this last time, but now that it's varnished, the one from the um, live pour, it really grew on me. Like it's all shiny and pretty. And when you put it on the wall from a distance, it looks amazing. So, we are, we're gonna sell it. So, happy about that. Um, you can see like my subliminal, uh, Look at, looky what I made in the back. My husband's idea. He's like, you should put something behind you to show people. But it doesn't go with our kitchen. But that's Winslow hanging out back there, at least for today. I'm not gonna do that. I don't know. Just, I feel cheesy, not my style. Um, a couple other things. So after the big pour, I tried to do a pour using all the leftover paint in the cups, because I had like those six cups. And so I poured all those on a 12 by 12. And yeah, it was just way too muddy. Well, I'll show you in a second because that's the canvas we're gonna pour over tonight. And then I took, I had like all these blues, like little, just a little bit left in the tube. So I got out my GAC, my GAC 800, added those to, um, I think like, I can't remember, three or four blues, the bronze, the gold, and some white. And that's where I made, um, I used those just on all my little um, hardwood, uh, pre adjusted panel canvases, and I just smeared paint on the side of that. Oh well, I'll be sanding that off. Uh, so the first one was, why am I up so high? Hold on, there's a better. So this is uh, Sanibel. Sanibel? I don't know what the, dry, the orientation should be. Someone has an idea, just say in the comments, like, hey, put, put the spot up on the top right or top left or bottom. Maybe it goes like this. I'm not real sure. So anyway, he, it turned out really way better than I could ever hope. And look how shiny it is and smooth. That's the GAC, man. That's the GAC 800. Um, I'll probably put some barrier coats of varnish before I resin because I will resin this. It's so pretty. Um, but man, thrilled. And it dried in like 18 hours. So I did that one. And then I did two of the little six by sixes. This guy, same deal, just poured it on. They were just straight dirty pours. And then this is uh, Captiva, which is my favorite because it looks very, um, it has depth because of that really super dark blue in the middle. And uh, that's my favorite. I don't know if I can sell him. And then finally, I know I'm talking a lot again, uh, from the twofer video, there's this guy who's now dry and will be resined um, in a few more weeks. Came out really well. Um, it's hard to see. I think he, I think once you shine him up, he's going to be very, it's a he. I don't know why. Maybe it should be a she. We'll say she. We'll call her Violet. Violet will be very um, shiny and dramatic. Um, you know, she'll be the drama queen. So really um, quite happy. Oh, I should get in closer with how uh, she turned out um, and I love love the black cells so yeah she's pretty great and then the second one from that two for video was the little red, oops red and pink number this one and I'm kind of mm -hmm, on this one eh, it's fine it doesn't knock my socks off and I'm getting to the point after doing this for a while, if it doesn't knock my socks off, I don't keep it. So I bet you I cover that one up. And then finally, when I was in Michael's, you know, buying canvases today, I bought a 
a little round. So I wanted you wanted to know if you guys wanted to see a clock being made from start to finish. That means from the pour to the resin to adding the clock parts to me drilling the whole the whole kit and caboodle. If you're interested, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just do it on my own because I'm in the mood. I'm in the mood to do it. All right, enough of me. Get off of me. Done on the canvas. So yeah, this is a hot mess. Look at it. It's all blurry and um, the colors are all, it just turned to mud, turned to shit, as they would say, um, from trying to use the leftover paint in the cup. So that did not work out well. So we're going to cover them up. Um, we're going to use GAC 800 tonight as our pouring medium. And I was on the, oh, what site was it? The painting, greatpainting.org, where they test a lot of products. And I was reading all about GAC and how it can get foamy and bubbly. And I'm wondering that's why those Florida inspired pieces came out so well because they were bubbly. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. But um, I've decided tonight for my, I'm gonna grab a big top. For my little experiment tonight, I tried to stay away from anything heavy body because it just takes so much of the GAC to use it. And so the first thing I noticed was in my first cup, I am using, this is Liquitex Soft Body. This is Muted Turquoise. I'm not so much worried about the colors as I am as how the soft body um, reacts with the GAC 800. And I gotta tell you, it's like mixing silk. It is awesome, awesome. Consistency is a little on the thin side, I'll give you that. But we're gonna roll with it and see what happens. A little bit thin, but um, man, it feels awesome. And no bubbles in either. I haven't even mixed up the other two, so next, what's my other soft body one though? So that was the muted turquoise, and then I have um, soft body by Liquitex. This is the Conacridone Blue Violet. And that's a nice shade of purple. And I just started mixing it before I put my phone on. And again, just lovely. Just, it feels like silk. It doesn't feel, even though it's running off my stick quite thin and not leaving a trace in my cup at all, which is sinking right into the paint, it doesn't feel runny. Like if the paint Still feels like it has a little bit of weight to it, if that makes any sense at all. Um, but doesn't really feel runny. It still feels substantial. Like, like, hey, I'm, I'm more, I'm just mixed up pigment. It, it just feels great. The next um, colors we have are not the soft body. Um, I'm using um, an artist loft. This is deep green, and I had just added. The ratio of GAC to paint, this is a little less than 50-50. I'm probably going to have to add a dollop more because this paint isn't as um, smooth and creamy as the soft body. So when I added the same amount, I get this. Still, see my trace? It just leaves giant mounds. You can tell it's not even flowing off the stick. So. I can either add water or GAC. And I'm gonna go no water tonight. And we're gonna try the GAC. So I'm gonna add a dollop more. Something like that, a quarter size more. And give it a mix and see how it feels. But you definitely need more of it to get the same consistency. If you were using the high fluid, um, like the golden high fluid paint, that's a little better, it's still. So let's try another quarter, it's still too thick. If you were using um, the high fluid stuff, you could do probably an eight to one or a 10 to one ratio of gap to paint, um, which would mean, you know, eight drops of paint to a little bit of GAC and it would be good to go. All right, this feels almost as well. Still feels a little thick, 
pouring much better though, but it definitely feels heavier. So even though my consistency is close, this does not feel as fluid, I guess, as the other ones. There's like three dark colors, but I like them together. So we're gonna roll with that. And then finally, I have another green. This is Windsor Newton, this is Sap Green. And I just added like two quarter, two quarter size uh, dollops worth into the Sap Green. Now the Windsor Newton is creamier than the Artist Loft. Um, it's a little more uh, similar to the uh, soft body paints and already even with just a quarter size dollop of the GAC, it's already creamier. But it's also, so let's see. See, a little bit better than the Artist Loft, but still too thick. So definitely need another dollop of that. Give that a stir. I'm sorry I'm spending a lot of time on stirring, but there seemed to be a lot of interest in this product, so I thought I would experiment just to see. That's a little better. Leaving a small trace in my cup before it disappears. And man, I'm just tempted to add a dollop of water, you know? I really am to both of these. Um, even though this one is better. Is it better now? Yeah, it's a little closer. This one is still kind of thick. All right. Another quarter size of the GAC. <laughs> Seems like a lot of pouring medium. We'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. Yeah, that's pretty great there. All right, so all mixed up. I don't know, I feel like I should eliminate a green. I think maybe just go with three colors. Um, dark green or light green? I kind of like the dark, but I'm kind of curious to see. Maybe I'll add a little bit of both because I just want to see the reaction with the two different paint brands. And then as usual, well this already went mixed up was my giant cup of tea white, which is Pretty much the same, a slight trace on the paint before it dissipates. So this is good to go. So I think I'm just gonna do a dirty cup pour and get out a big plastic cup and we're just gonna pour all over this canvas. Um, see what happens. So, Oh, I wanted to tell you guys too that um, on Monday I spent off and on several hours filming. Um, I did five different videos of start to finish of um, how to resin and or how I resin. Let me clarify, it's how I do things. That doesn't mean it's the only, you know, my way is not the highway. I think I've said that before but it's just how I do things and things that work really well for me. Well, anyway, um, I use an app called um, Splice. Let me add my, uh, like a single drop of silicone in these colors. I use this app called Splice and I uploaded all five videos plus pictures of the, you know, newly resined artwork and it created one cohesive video. And then when I went to save it to my camera roll, it told me that my, my camera didn't have enough, or my camera, my phone didn't have enough memory. So then I went and looked at my memory and I have, like my, my memory on my phone is only a third full. So I'm like, okay, you're crazy. And then I thought, well, I'll just have to like do it the hard way and load one video and just say part one, part two, you know, and have five more videos on YouTube. Um, but then when I went to load um, the videos, all except one, YouTube said they were corrupted. And I was like, son of a bee, because that's just annoying. Um, so I don't know what I'm gonna do 
those pieces are done and I, I really liked it because I, I tried to show a variety um, of pieces to resin. So I had some that um, had nothing at all. I showed how I cleaned it, how I patted it dry, um, little tips and tricks um, for, for fighting the stickiness of resin. I had a, a couple pieces. One had just one layer of um, a barrier coat, which is was a spray varnish. Another piece had like three layers. You know, a whole variety of things. So you could see what would happen, um, particularly with resin and the silicone. I demonstrated how um, silicone can cloud up if you add it directly to resin on your canvas. Everything. And... I will try to get it to, to load for you guys, um, but if not, it's gonna be probably at least three weeks before I do it again, because all these pieces I, I have um, to resin all need to cure, and I'm not gonna rush that, so um, that's kind of a bummer. I'll, I'll do what I can. Uh, New Year's resolution is to find better um, software or, you know, apps to use. Oh, that's really dark. Oh, I'm not going to do that. So, yeah. I just I was annoyed by that. Anyway. So, for tomorrow... Happy Thanksgiving, if I, for, if I forget to tell you all. Um, enjoy your time with your family, your friends, or being alone. Or maybe you'll get to paint. Or maybe you'll buy some work. I don't know. Whatever you decide to do. Have a great day tomorrow. Um, kind of a funky color combination we got going on. Um, I might be able to pour on Friday because I'm off of work the day after because there's no school, which would be nice. And my whole family, um, extended family, we're all going out to dinner this year. Like for, I think, what would it be the first time for me ever? not going either cooking myself or going somewhere um, to somebody's house for Thanksgiving, usually up to my sister's house. But uh, that'll be really nice. Nobody wanted to cook this year. So we'll see what that's like. And then um, I haven't had to make Thanksgiving dinner in about eight or nine years. My family won't let me. <laughs> um, in like 2009, 2010, something like that, I, uh, we, like I, I think I mentioned before, I live in an old, old townhouse. So it's been remodeled and renovated almost everywhere. Well, anyway, uh, we redid our kitchen, the kitchen you see in these videos. And, um, We had all new appliances, and so I volunteered to make Thanksgiving for everybody and said, it's my turn. I want to do it. And I go, all right, have at it. And um, light cream next, I guess. And so, you know, I got out my cookbooks and the best Martha Stewart turkey dinner recipes and prepped everything for like two days beforehand and got up early that morning and, you know, put the turkey in the oven. It was like 24 pound turkey and kept an eye on it all day and the whole family came over at two and, you know, was making all the other dishes. Everything else was potluck, so everyone else brought the other dishes. So I'm like, hey, my oven has a turkey. Anyway, around, I don't know what to think of this color combination. Um, around two o'clock, I peek into the oven 
um, take the foil off the legs and the turkey looked amazing. I mean, guys, like amazing. It was all like golden brown and like it looked like a commercial. It really did. I was like so, so proud of myself and everyone was ooing and awing. And like it still needed to cook for an hour and then we had the thermometer and then like okay it's you know whatever temperature it needs to be it's done and it looked really juicy I mean you had to see it like I should have taken a picture it was just gorgeous and I'm talking so much I made way too much paint but that's okay uh, at four o'clock you know my husband gets out the turkey and he goes to carve in it and everyone's seated at the table and it looked so beautiful. And he got about two or three slices into it. And it was raw. It was totally raw. And that was because my new fancy oven sitting over there, looking all innocent. Who, me? It's total user error. I had it set on convection instead of convection bake, like whatever recipe I was using said to which just meant that for like eight hours, all it did was blow hot air on the outside of the turkey. So that's why it looks so great. Completely raw on the inside. My father-in-law was, everyone, most people thought it was funny. Like we just ended up like broiling it at 500 degrees and at eight, ended up like two hours later eating this really dried out, you know, turkey. And then, um, but uh, my father-in-law was not pleased. And I haven't been asked to cook uh, Thanksgiving dinner since, which I guess is kind of a pro in my book, right? But man, I haven't, I, never, I didn't live that down for a long, long time. It's pretty funny. All right. I added a lot of white in between just because the colors were so dark. Um, and I think I'm just, I'm not gonna pour just straight on. I'm just gonna pour it all around, do some ribbons. And uh, yeah, let's just see what happens. Oh my God. Please, please, please be halfway decent because that's a lot of product, a lot of gack. This is why I have a love-hate relationship with this product. Because if you do a fail, you look at this, you know, you just blew like, you know, 35 bucks in pouring medium and paint. But then when you have a, a good one, you're like, oh, oh my God, I love Gap. So that's my uh, love-hate relationship. So let's see uh, the status of our relationship today. All right. I'm going to start in a corner just because I hit corners. And then Oh my gosh, I love the colors. <gasps> wow. Who knew, right? All right, just let that hang out. Man, that's pretty. I gotta remember those colors. Holy moly. Go ahead, meet up. Go meet up there in the middle. You can do it. Go meet up, yeah? You, how about you over here? Don't be shy. Come on over. Come say hi to your friends right here in the middle. Maybe I'll add another stripe of that. I usually don't like when the, you get to the end in the white, but I'll make an exception this time. Because that's kind of cool. I'm going to put one. Do I have any paint left? I'm going to put one in here, too. Just something little, because I like it. I can do what I want. Uh -huh. Oh, I found my um, my bottles, you know, my squeeze bottles to do a puddle pour. I have four of them. So I am taking suggestions for colors. 
So if you know of a color combination, send them to me in the comments and I'll pick one and um, we'll do a puddle pour next. I bought a, uh, a 10 by 20 canvas to do one on, so. All right. Not really selly. Like some kind of sort of want to pop up, I think. But let me see how I wanted to move it around. I love this part. I love that with the white. I gotta do something about this, these two blank areas. So let me do that first. Uh, I don't like it. Just maybe I don't like that. You come off. All right. Let's kind of wiggle it. Mm. I think you want to go this way. Do you want to meet up or not? Like, no way. I don't know that person. I'm not going near him. Will you? Go ahead. Meet up. You too. All right, there we go. All right, I am gonna pour a bunch off because it is too much. And that's what I did the other night that seemed to work. And then come back and hopefully I don't pour too, too much off. And then come down and get some of that. Oh no, I don't want to lose that color. I want to keep my uh, cabbage up top. All right. Let me just look at it composition wise a second. You'll be seeing I'll be doing a lot more um, pours. I kind of I need a break from um, the flip and drags. Um, I noticed like a lot of my paintings have that linear look and like I just need a break from that. Uh, I don't like whatever you are. Hold on, let me, uh, oh, I have a towel right here. Let me wipe off my cans before I stick my finger in my painting right there. Yeah, go away. Hmm. I love the hum, how vibrant it is. Move it this way. The one thing I don't like is uh, it's going in so many directions. There's no focal point and there's no like, oh, this painting needs to be hung in this orientation. Which I guess can be a good thing, and I should, you know, not be such a control freak, but, um, and it leaves it open to interpretation by, you know, whoever would buy it. Let me, uh, give it a torch, see what happens. <laughs> Get him, Dusty, you tell him. Uh, let's be chicken, do a corner first. Let's stop and just see what that does first. Hey, honey, take off your shoes. <laughs> All right, seems to be selling up okay. They're a little small, which is okay. Because it's already got a lot going on. And I do like that you can kind of put the cells where you want. So if there's an area you don't like, you can, well, I'll just hide it with some cells. Like that little guy right there, this little 
thing. I don't know what that little thing is. Let's just hide him. I, I love this background here. So I'm like, I want to leave it, right? And I love how the, um, what was that color called again? Oh, the, the Quinacridone Blue Violet. <gasps> That's my new favorite color. That's the color of the week, y'all. Um, with the blue cells on top. That's kind of primo. But I don't like that, so I'm going to zap it. See what it does. I'm gonna leave this alone, right? Leave that alone. You know what it looks like, and I know I, I know I use this analogy a lot, but this one really does look like because of the blues and greens, it looks like um, a view from the airplane, and you see the fields, and then you see all the subdivisions and houses, and you know. Hey, there's the strip mall where I get my hair cut. You know, all that stuff. Um, I'm just looking at it now for balance of the cells. The cells actually help the composition, I think, because, like I said, you didn't know where to turn it. Um, so, I've got a little there, there, a whole bunch of really pretty ones here in the middle. I think maybe some right in here, and then I'm gonna stop. So yeah, right there, see if they grow any. Are we gonna do anything, or did I not get close enough? Oh, there we go, let those grow a second. And leave the rest of this blank. Well, except for maybe right there, hold on, I lied. Very interesting. So for this one, I think I tilted just a smidgen too much. Like I should have stopped because the areas where there's more paint, um, particularly like this middle section, have better cells. Where on the end where I was like, you know, stretching it out, the cells, even though I hadn't torched yet, there's just not enough um, paint on the canvas and it's like I'll try to sew up for you man but I don't have a lot to work with and so they're kind of wonky I mean they're fine um, but they're not as nice as like this whole middle part which I'll show you when I zoom in and uh, my sides are taped so I don't have to worry about the sides because it's wood um, very different but totally grooving on this color combination uh, I have a bunch of white left. I might, I have green left. I might mix up those colors real quick and uh, do a little pour on here. That would make a cool little clock. Or maybe I do it and pour over this one. What do you think? That's what I'm gonna do after I go offline. I'm gonna do that. I'm not gonna film it. Um, yeah. Ta-da! Uh, let me get the camera down because I'm already man. No matter what I do. I'm always at a half an hour What are you gonna do? I'm a talker um, Love you guys. Happy Thanksgiving um, Thanks for all the love and support and the comments keep them coming and um, Yeah, hope to uh, post the uh, resin video soon um, Let me zoom in take care See these uh, these cells here? Aren't they great? Like love those. But then if you come over, let's see in this one corner. Where's the corner? There. I mean they're cells, but they're not these guys. They're just not as good. They're a little bit wonky. So um, where am I? The kind of grooving on the color colors. Different for me, right? Um interesting looking let me come down here because i love this kind of background here with the stripes where's my finger where is it yeah here like with the stripes and the multicolor backgrounds it's not like my usual background where it kind of all blends these colors are all very much separate and i'm kind of loving that so um yeah i hope it dries well see you next time Bye bye